We're back to the future. <laughs> Not only back to the future, but we're really, really back to the future. Today we're going to finish off the Emirates of Shem, oh. Chelek Aleph, oh. the first chapter of Tomer Devar. And what my dear friends, Raboz and Rishlomo were speaking about before, which wasn't recorded, unfortunately, <laughs> is our relationship to time. What we expect, who we are, where we're coming from, where we're going to, where we are right now. And what do we say in L'chadoidi every Arab Shabbos? Sof ma'aseh b'machshava t'chila. The last in the creations and the first in mind. Because when it comes down to us, we very, very limited and bounded people, bounded by our bodies and bounded by our minds and our thoughts and what we can do, when we recognize that the most important part of us is the nefesh elokam imal. It's the godly part of us that gives us more than just animal life. It's interesting. You look in, you look in Embracious, look in the creation, and you find that ev there are four words that are used for making, for doing. Bara, which means to create, Yoitzer, which means to form. Um, asa, which means to make. And what's the fourth one? Um, the fourth one is the Keter one. The Atzilus. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atzilus. Those are three terms that are used in the creation. And it's interesting, the Ramban says that when Hashem created the world, He didn't just say, okay, here is an ant, an elephant, an, a monkey, a human being. He didn't create those things full. He created first a primordial clay, as it were. What, would he, what, was, what he calls hiuli. And what the Greek philosophers always also speak to as highly. And this substance is what Hashem was bara. He created this material from which everything else in the world was formed, except for two things. Those things that are beyond our comprehension, which refers to the Leviathan, the Leviathan, this enormous fish, which is larger than the largest dinosaurs ever could have been, which existed once and which which the Torah says Hashem plays with. It says Hashem created them. Bara. And when Hashem created man, he was created initially with all the other creatures in the created world. With the monkeys and the insects and the fish and the elephants and the birds and the, the tigers and the lion, everything. He was, man was originally a, a brute, a thinking brute to some degree, he, just like animals can think, but a brute. And it was only, and that's why it says that Hashem was Yotzer Adam. He formed him, because he formed him from the clay. We know that Hashem formed him from the clay. That's why he was called, what was his name? Adam. Adam. What does Adam mean? What is, it, what is the short word Adam, the root of it? Adama. Oh. Adam was from Adama. He was formed and he lived and he was aware of his existence. He lived with all the animals in, in the wild jungles, coexisted. And then Hashem took him and brought him to Gan Eden. 
and he saw the contrast. But before we brought him to Gan Eden, it says, Vayivra Elohim es Adam b'tzalmoi. Hashem was bara. He created different than any other being because everything else was, was merely formed from this clay, this hiuli. And he put into this Adam who had been formed in clay, who had been formed from Adama, he gave him a godly soul. And this, my dear friends, is what makes us different. We have a godly soul. We are, number one, all part of each other, which is part of God. We have the ability to be creative ourselves. We act much higher than just pure instinct. We feel, we seek spirituality, we grow, we develop. Not only that, but we make our own food. No animal makes its own food. When Adam Arishon was expelled from Gan Eden, the Medrash tells us that he was very, very, he was completely brokenhearted. Why? Because now he said, I have to eat like my donkey from its trough. And Hashem said, no. That I'm going to teach you how to make bread. And Adam was calmed down. He was comforted knowing that indeed he had not fallen to the level of the lowest animals, but indeed had this creative spark. And so we have within ourselves that God leaves part of ourselves. And that infinite part of ourselves is intrinsically unlimited. That's why we can say, Yeshua's Hashem Keheref Ayin. The deliverance of Hashem comes with a wink of an eye. A person can be the richest man in the world and can lose it all in a split second. They can be the poorest pauper in the world and overnight become wealthy. They can be crippled, unable to walk, and immediately be strong and healthy. We are only limited by our fears, our, our imagination, and our connection to God, our das. And using that das, we, have, we can be incredibly creative, just like, just like Hashem gave us this special gift. So as I said, today we're going to go back to Gan Eden. We're going to go back to the future. And so interesting that we look at Adam and Adam is an acronym for three people. How do we spell Adam? Aleph. What's the second letter? Dalid. And the third letter? Mem. And who? And the Arizal tells us that Aleph, Dalid, Mem stands for Adam, David, Mashiach. That within Adam Arishon was this potential to have David Amelech and Mashiach ben David. That potential is always there. And not only that, but we are in not only remarkable times and the events of the world, but look when it's happening. The Holy Chassam Soifer, as we learned last week, I believe Rabbi Leo has told us, he told us that the Mechemes Gog and Magog, the war that will bring about the destruction of the nations and the kingship of Melech HaMashiach is going to begin on Shemini Atzeres. We find that in the, the Holy Sefer, B'nai Saschar from Denoiv. We find some remarkable things about the month of Cheshvan. He points out that the first base of Mikdash 
was built on Rosh Hashanah, on, during Tishrei. It was dedicated then. The second base of Mikdash, which was dedicated by the Chashmonaim, when did that take place? In which month? Whoa, who can tell us the story about the Chashmonaim? The Maccabees? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. And what month does Hanukkah occur on? Kislev, Kislev correct. And the Bnei Sashar says that between those two months, <laughs> this month of Cheshvan, is when Melech Mashiach is going to come and he's going to dedicate, he's going to, be, he's going to consecrate the third Beis HaMikdash during the month of Cheshvan. 200 years ago he said this. Not only that, but there's another allusion to this connection between Adam, David, and Mashiach. And Mashiach. You think of, we've talked about before, the seven branches of our holy menorah. The two ears, the two eyes, the two nostrils, and the mouth, from which our, our sensory nerves come from. All of the sensory nerves were contaminated by Adam and Chava. The eyes, come look. It's pleasing to the eye. The ears, come try it out. The taste, obviously. Touch, obviously. There was one that was not. Smell. The sense of smell was not. And the Chazal tell us that Mashiach will use the sense of smell to be able to discern any sins that a person has committed. The sense of smell, says the Sefer HaYetzirah, is directly connected to the month of? Which month? Cheshvan! The Sefer HaYetzirah points out that every month is connected to a different um, sensory nerve. And the sense of smell is connected to the month of Cheshvan. And the sense of smell is connected to Mashiach. The illusions are remarkable. Now, there are many aspects of the sense of smell, the nostrils. What do we call someone who is an angry person? We call him Charon Af. He has anger in his nose. Think about the person who's angry. We see his nostrils flaring. Anger. And yet, the greatest attribute of Hashem is erech apayin, patience. The antithesis of anger is patience. And this is also another name for the mita that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, mimei kedem. Erech apayim refers to that which precedes time. It refers to the ancient sense of perfection. And this is, the tw this is the 13th of the attributes. We talk about um, Zeir Anpin, a long, I mean, uh, a short face, and we also talk about Erech Anpin. Erech Anpin also refers to this attribute of that which preceded time, the time when Hashem was here alone, Veniska Hashem Levadoi. Hashem was all by himself. Yevater Yaakov Levadoi. And all that will be left is us and Hashem. And all the nations will recognize that there's no one else but Hashem. It's all referring to these times. So knowing that what this month is and what, what's in store for us, how pleasing it is to us that Hashem is allowing us to finish Chelik Aleph, Perak Aleph of Tamar Devorah with this very last of the attributes of, of mercy, Mimei Kedem. And it's interesting also, the Gematria of, of Mar Cheshvan 
is Rachmana Adkilan. Hashem, have mercy on us. This is the prayer that we say on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. We say it before we blow the shofar, according to Sephardim. On fast days we say it, Rachmana Adkilan. And Ashkenazim say it, that remember the merits of the forefathers when we go into the sukkah. Because again, there's this connection between sukkahs and our deliverance. And our merit not necessarily being worth anything, but there's always this other merit. So with that introduction, let's go to the 12th of the attributes of kindness, higher attributes of kindness from Micha, and that is Asher Nishpat Alavosenim. We talked last time about the two interesting attributes of Yaakov and Avram. Chesed le Avram means that those who Hashem looks upon and sees that they're acting kindly, Hashem will go out of his way to be kind to that person. So it behooves us to act kind so that we will merit that, as we spoke about last week. This wonderful idea of being chassidim, living, living lifnim meshur hadin. A chassid doesn't mean someone who dresses all in black and wears a shtrimal on Shabbos. No, it means someone who goes above and beyond what's asked of him. Someone who wants to please Hashem. Someone who wants to do nice to other people. Someone who you walk by him and he asks you, do you have any money? And your initial reaction is to say, no, I don't have anything. And then you reach into your pocket, and you take your wallet out, and you give him a shekel or two. That's lift the Meshur din. You don't have to do that, but you want to please Hashem. And by making another person happy, you're pleasing Hashem. That's Chesed Le'avram. The one before that was Tita Nemes Le'akov. We have to be honest, we have to be straight. Those people who act righteously, who act according to the letter of the law, we have to be honest with them. Because chas v'sholem, when we don't, we create a terrible chil Hashem. But what happens when you have somebody who has neither the attribute of honesty or the attribute of kindness? How can Hashem bestow kindness on such a person? How can he look after us? That's what we're going to look at, learn at that now. And this is the twelfth attribute, Asher Nishpat Alavosenu. Listen to what the Tomer Devora says. Yesh b'nei Adam she'enam hagunim. He doesn't beat around the bush. There are people who are not very nice, who are not proper. But Hashem is compassionate to everyone and everything. Kidafarish b'gemorah. As the Gemara explains, Vechanoisi Asher Achain, and I will be gracious to whoever I choose. What does that mean? Amar Kodesh Baruchi, Oitzizel Leodam Sheenoch Anohagimim. I have a special treasure warehouse for those people that are not nice, that are not appropriate, that don't act right. Yesh. And this is what's called Hashem's free will. Meaning that a person hasn't earned any merits. We talk about why was the first, why was the second base of Mictus destroyed? Because of sinas chinam, because unwarranted hatred. And the Chachamim say, how will the third base of Mictus be rebuilt? As an antidote for that. By ahavas chinam, by love without any reason at all. And Hashem says, I have an oitzer, I have a warehouse, I have an ichsun. I have a warehouse, and this warehouse is called oitzer chaninim. I have the warehouse for those people who don't deserve any merits. And really, there's an important lesson from this. A person should never say, wow, I deserve lots of merit from Hashem because I do so many mitzvahs. 
Hashem looks at everything we do very, very carefully. They say that Hashem is not a mavatran. Hashem is, doesn't forego anything. Hashem remembers everything we've done. And if you've done something right, Hashem says, oh, 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 what about that? But everything that you remember, miraculously Hashem forgets. So the more you are honest with yourself, the more Hashem will give you. Don't say that I deserved it or I earned it or it's coming to me. Because when we look down to it, when we look at ourselves, the amount that we can do wrong with all that we do right is extraordinary. It's depressing. It's mind-blowing. So what's our job? What we need to do is not try to find, not try to find necessarily all that we've done that's good, but look at what we are and that, 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 that's so very good. Point out to Hashem the things that we've done, not because... We want to earn mitzvah points or merits because we want to get close to Hashem. We want to feel our closest, our closest to Him. That's why the word mitzvah is from the Shorosh Tzivtzav Akasher, attached. Every mitzvah we do is not to earn merits or points, but it's to attach ourselves more to Hashem. When we attach ourselves to Hashem, then we're part of Hashem that much more. That's what we can do. Hashem creates us to be part of him, that's the Tzalem Elohim. But we have to attach ourselves more by doing mitzvahs, not to get merits, not to get points, not to be able to accumulate stocks, but just to be close to him. And to know that we ourselves don't really deserve anything in this, and despite the fact that we don't deserve anything, Hashem gives us a special, special warehouse. A warehouse of rachamim, a warehouse of chinunim, kel rachim v'chanun, of mercy. Yesh oitzer chinunim, she ha-kodesh baruch hu chinim v'noisim lahem matnas chinim. Hashem gives us a present because He loves us. Why? What's the logic behind it? We need to find logic in what Hashem does? Yes. We want to understand Hashem's ways. The whole idea of Tomer Devorah is try to understand how Hashem does things and why He does things so that we can act like Him. We don't want to know because we want to, we want to plumb the depths of, of, of the secrets of the Torah and the secrets of the world. No. We want to understand Hashem so we can understand how to act ourselves. Because that's what Tomer Dover is all about. It's teaching us how to act, how to be a mensch, how to be a godly person, how we can act in His image. And what is the reason why we have this, this free will warehouse, this warehouse of incredible mercy, endless mercy? Here's the reason why. Even though they may not have any merits at all, they have inherited the merits from their forefathers. Even if they're not proper and nice, they merit receiving Hashem's kindness because they come from their offspring of tzaddikim, of forefathers that were very, very good. And I swore to the forefathers that I would not betray their children. And therefore, I'll be like a GPS. I will lead them and direct them until they reach their completion and perfection. That's why even though we have, we're, 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 we're beings of free choice. We can do whatever we want. You ever been to, uh, I don't know if you have, if you've ever been to, to Disneyland. When I was growing up in California, they had in Disneyland this incredible ride that I couldn't go on until I was six, seven years old because I wasn't tall enough. It's called the Autopia. And the Autopia, a kid can go in a car and he presses the gas pedal and he has the steering wheel 
and he can go wherever he wants. Well, almost, because there's a guardrail in the middle that makes sure the car, the car can't go to the left or to the right too far. And that's sort of what Hashem does with us. He gives us free choice. We can steer the wheel. We can go to the left, we can go to the right, but he doesn't let us fall off the cliff. He's like a GPS. And even if we mess up and we make, we, 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 we take, we, met, we use poor judgment and we make wrong decisions, Hashem will help us to pick ourselves up, brush ourselves off, and get back on the road to where we need to go to reach our tachlis, to get to where we need to go to complete our purpose that we were in this world and we were created for. Because every single one of us, all of us, were created to perfect the world. Bishvili nivra olam. It was because of me that the world was created. And if I wasn't created, the world would be incomplete. And if I'm in the darkest doldrums, I'm in the most terrible place, I've lost all my money, the Misrata Mas is, is, is doing, the, the, the IRS and the tax authorities are doing a, um, a, uh, an audit. And I stand to lose everything. I stand to lose my car and my house. I stand to go into jail. Never give up. There's an amazing story of the Tasha Rebbe. The Tasha Rebbe, Zichron Livracha, who lived in Montreal, who lived in, near, near Montreal, had a, um, had a chassid who lived in, in New York City. And he had a very prominent business, and he was under audit by the, by the IRS, and he was standing, to, and he, st- he stood to lose everything. The business was going to be taken away by the government. And so he went to the Tasha Rebbe. He was very, very down. And the Tasha Rebbe asked him, tell me all the people that you work for you. And he mentioned this person, that is his assistant and his secretaries, and this person and that person. And he listed a whole crew of, of staff. And the Tasha Rebbe listened. Is there anybody else? He said, oh yeah. There's the janitor, Charles. He says, that's him. When are you meeting with the IRS? Tomorrow. Call up Charles and tell him you want him to come to the meeting with you. And tell him to dress up very nicely. The janitor, the guy who who sweeps the floors, And he tells Charles, please be in front of my office at 8.30 in the morning sharp. And we'll go together to an important meeting. And Charles doesn't show up until 9 o'clock. And he's very afraid. He says, what happened? He says, well, I'm sorry. I I went to a basketball game last night. And I, I made a really good new friend. And... We had a few drinks together, and we, we had a wonderful time, and one hour passed into the next until it was very late, so forgive me. But I'm here now. He said, okay. And so he drives a Charles to the federal building where the IRS was, and he has his file with him. And he has no idea why Charles is supposed to come with him. And he's preparing a case, which is a case impossible. There's no way he could possibly get out from under what he needs to do. And the tax man, whose name was Lawrence Johnson, if I remember correctly. He goes into the office and he goes up the stairs and he comes and he goes to the door where it says Lawrence Lawrence, Lawrence Johnson, um, tax investigator. And he walks in. And he sees Johnson's eyes, and they are glaring at him. And he looks next to him, and he starts to smile. Larry, what you doing here? And his friend who we met at the basketball game was Lawrence Johnson. And the tax man takes the stamp, stamps the paper, says, case closed. And this... This is how we can see the deliverance of Hashem from the, the darkest hole. Siddiquim have a glimpse into this world, but we all can do it. And we're never, ever away from Hashem's mercy. And this, 
This is exactly why we say that we, can, we should never ever give up hope no matter what because Hashem has this, has this treasure house, this storehouse for those that are not worthy. And Hashem will always direct us where we need to go like a GPS. So that's the 12th. That's the, that's the 12th of the 13 attributes of mercy. So it looks like we've, we've covered everything. Amazing. But we haven't. There's a 13th attribute. And that 13th attribute is what I talked about in the beginning. That which precedes time, going back to the future. The 13th attribute is called Mimei Kedem. From the days of before. And let's see what that means. There is a certain Mida that Hashem uses to relate to Israel. We said before, actually I, I skipped the last paragraph of the last one. We said that Hashem Nishbat Senu, the 12th attribute, teaches us that if we don't have merit, then certainly our forefathers have merit. And how can, how can Hashem be cruel to us if we had fathers or grandparents or great-grandparents that were tzaddikim? And if not, we go back to Moshe Rabbeinu. And if not, then we go back to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. And Hashem promised them he would never betray his children. So that's what we call that he swore to our forefathers never to forget us, and that's where we have this warehouse of kindness. But here, this is beyond that. Hashem says, Kishetam chus. Let's say that you've used up all the merits that you have. hagunim. We ourselves have no merits. Even though we have merits of our forefathers, there's a limit to that. But this 13th merit, this is the joker. This is the card that we have that no matter what, Hashem will deliver us from any danger and any destruction and any fault that we have. We have nothing to receive. But the Torah says, We say to Hashem that even though we may not have merits from our forefathers, what do we say? What's the essence of the Musa for Rosh Hashanah? The three parts of Malchios, Zichroinos, and Shafras. That we crown, we coronate Hashem as our king. We ask him to remember. And he, we, we use the shofar to sound our deliverance. And the first verse that we bring up to remember all that Hashem, we want Hashem to remember us, is from the, the Haftorah of Rosh Hashanah. Zacharti lach chesed nuiraich. Ko amar Hashem. Hashem says to the Navi, I remembered the kindness of your youth that I brought you out of Egypt. Kulas avasayich, avasayich. And the chasana that I made with you. That Hashem used Har Sinai like a, like a chuppah over us. And that Hashem will never forget. And this is what we talked about before, that when we left Egypt, and when we came to Har Sinai, we enhanced that never shall come imal. We literally melded and merged with Hashem and became one with Him. And that merit is eternal and can never be broken. 
No matter how bad we are, no matter how evil we are, no matter how lacking in merits we have, and we are, Hashem will never forget that He brought us out of Mitzrayim, and He gave us the Torah in Harsinai, and He brought us to Eretz Yisrael, and He won't forget us today either. Mamish Zocher Kodesh Baruch Hu Yimei Hashem remembers the days of old, the days of Kedem. They say, the Ramban brings down and the Targum Unchus brings down, and I've quoted this to you before, that Gan Edim is called Gan Edim Kedem. That some people translate it as Gan Edim to the east. But the Ramban and the, and the Targum Unchus say, that Gan Eden was before. That Hashem created Gan Eden before He created the world. Because He created the potential for us to be in this miraculous world where everything is perfect and orderly and not the chaotic jungle that we find ourselves in. And all we have to do is reach out for Hashem. Zoichar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yimei Kadmonim Hashem remembers these days of old. Ava shahaya mikoidim, the love that Hashem had that preceded everything else when Hashem created Kla Yisrael and when Hashem gave us the Torah and Hashem brought us out of Mitzrayim. Uvezeh yizachar lehem kol mitzvah she'asu miyoyim noldasayim. And therefore Hashem remembers every single mitzvah that we've done from the time we were born. V'kol atoivos, every act of kindness that I've done. If I was in a play group, and I shared abyssly with somebody, that kindness is remembered by Hashem, even though I can barely talk. Any kindness, any connection that we do, we make to each other and to Hashem is remembered. And all the mitzvahs and the good attributes that we have. That it's through these things that Hashem conducts the world. And because of all this kindness that he's done and all the kindness that we've done and all the mitzvahs that we've done to connect to him, Hashem says, no, I'm not going to abrogate my bris, my covenant that I made with them. Because this midah of remembering days of, your, days of old, foregone days, is above, is all inclusive of all the midas. As, as it's explained in the Idra, in Rabbi Shimba Yochai's Last Will and Testament of the Zohar Kodesh. And so too, we need to apply this to ourselves as well. Shafilo Yamse Tane, Me'elo Haniskaro, Siyemer. Let's say you have someone who is so evil and so disgusting and you happen to meet this person on the street. Say to yourself, he's done good things in the past. He has forefathers that have done good. He is a descendant of the Bnei Yisrael who left Mitzrayim. And there was a time before he sinned too. There was a time and there was moments and there was years when he was kosher. And remember the kindness that these people did, these horrible people did when they were small. And remember the purity of them when they were weaned and even before that when they were nursing. Remember how we talked about our relationship to Hashem. I think it was in the very first session. Our relationship to Hashem when we dive into Hashem should be like a baby whose eyes are locked into her mother or his mother. And there's this incredible bond and kindness and love and gratitude. It's, it's beyond logic. And that's our relationship with Hashem. Our, lie, our eyes look up to Hashem like we look up to our Father in Heaven. Many people have spoken during this war of the war of Amalek. 
in the famous Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah, where it says, it quotes the story, when Amalek is fighting down below, Yeshua is leading the fight, and Aaron and Chor supporting our, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's arms. And the, and the Mishnah asks, V'chiyadav shel Moshe asos milchama, or sovas milchama, the Torah says that when Moshe's arms are outstretched upward, the Jews are victorious in the war. And when they fall, when they fell down, when, he, when they couldn't be supported anymore, then Amalek would prevail. And the Mishnah asks, is it when Moshe's hands were high that the Jews prevailed? No! Ella, but rather, when the Jews, when Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jews lifted up their arms and their eyes to a Kodesh Baruch Hu in prayer, recognizing the Ein Od Milvadoi, there's no one else but you, Hashem, and we have no one to entrust our, our lives to, and we have no one to turn to but you, Hashem. When we, put, when we don't say, as we, as we mentioned last week, we don't say, Mi Yamala Gevuras Yisrael, who can foretell the strength of Israel? But instead, Mi Yamala Gevuras Hashem. We say, Hashem, you're the reason for our success, and you're the reason why we're alive, and you're our Father, and you're, our, you're part of us. You're integratively part of us. You're part of us. You're inside of us. And we have no way to be victorious without you, that we're victorious. And that's exactly what this last meet is all about. When we recognize and we lock ourselves in, our eyes and our hearts and our being, and I'll throw in a little bit of Jewish medicine, our eyes and our hearts are one. How do we know that? Because first of all, in Shema, we say, Don't turn after your eyes and after your heart. Don't think differently than anything else than what Hashem teaches us. And don't let your eyes go astray to things that are not part of Hashem. And not only that, but the Gemara in Avodah Zorah tells us that if somebody's eyes are in pain, they're not allowed to fast on a fast day because the eyes are connected to the heart. And if a person has pain in their eyes, it could cause potentially serious heart illness. So let's dedicate our eyes and our hearts and our whole beings to Hashem during this war. Let's all be tzaddikim. Let's all live lifnim shura sadin. Let's all live to be able to sanctify the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. Let's live in time, making time holy and making space holy. Let's do everything that we do, not looking for excuses and loopholes, but rather to have everyone in the world look at us and say, Umi Yisrael, there's no people like the Jewish people in the whole world. And so therefore, concludes the Torah Devorah on Midas, Shalosh the 13th attribute. I'm sorry. So actually, we should actually pray for somebody's return. Rather than, than enact revenge against them, we should actually try to bring them back, just like Hashem brings people back. We should try to recognize that just as Hashem is patient, so we should be patient. And with that, the Torah Devorah concludes part one and says, Adam that these 13 attributes are how a person should emulate his creator. That these are magical character traits that will enable us to overcome anything in this world of Teva, in this world of chance, that really this world is all illusionary. However we act in this world down below, the way we act will break open 
the worlds of bounty in the upper worlds. And Hashem will grant us tremendous kindness. Mamash kevish mashi yisnoig. Exactly how we act down below, kach mashbiya lamala, so too Hashem will give to us. Vigore misha oisa mida ta'ir la'olam. And that mida that we initiate, Hashem will shine upon the world. L'chach ayelizu me'enai. So a person should never forget. A person should never ignore any of these 13 attributes of kindness. And a person should never forget the, thir- the words from Micha, Mikel Kamoicha, and so on. So it's, if he constantly reviews it, he'll remember it. That if a person comes into a situation, where there's a chance to use one of those meters and not just act according to the letter of the law, even if according to that letter of the law. To be honest, he can say, wait a second, I'm not going to act cruel, I'm going to step back and I'm going to do that act which is going to endear me to Hashem. Because we want to keep that meter alive in the world. And then we're kind to each other. When we act appropriately, we rise above Teva and we live in the world of Nisim. <sighs> Next week in Mir Tashem, we're going to start part two. What's, what is part two? Part two is the, is the ten spheros. How we can live according to the ten spheros of Hashem. How we start from this highest place of Or Ein Sof, this light. This light is shining upon us. And how do we disseminate it? How do we bring it down? Through Keser, mm-hmm. Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Gevura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hod, Yisod, and Malchus. Those are the ten spheres. Mm-hmm. And the Talmud Devar will teach us how we can integrate those into our lives based on what we've learned thus far. And Amir Tzashem, we should celebrate Asuda Saida for our great victory in this coming week. Amen. Amen.